Hello everyone, Attack Power here with Game 1 between Java Pasa and Dennis in the Kingdom of Steel Tournament Round 1. Let's dive right in here to Kostritsa. And on the left, in the red, we have Dennis playing first Piatori, uh, I can't say the rest, the Polish, on Maverick Income. And on the right, in the blue, we have Java Pasa playing Rukma Rapana, also on Maverick Income. So interesting matchup here on Coast 30. So both players playing strong infantry decks on the left here in the red with first Polish here. Uh, Dennis, a pretty loaded recon tab, lots of vehicles, four cards of different vehicles. Definitely interesting to see a basically full tab of infantry, although 76 only, a lot of uh, veterancy on those and stuff. And uh, bring in the Otsiokani, which are the big like Strafniki Disheartened unit. I'm not a fan of these. I actually don't think they perform super well. I, I would prefer more like Strelsi. Uh, SVTs or LKMs, um, actually LKMs, uh, for their double DP machine gun and such. And we're already diving in here. I guess I got a little close to the recording. On the other side here, Rukma, I mean, your usual mix of Rukma stuff. Lots of Air Force, lots of infantry, nothing really special in the build. Uh, yeah, Yakari, still the best CQC infantry in the game for price, for sure. But here we go. We are off. It looks like um, you know, here not pushing super hard into the town. Uh, Dennis will definitely have a chance to get in there. There's a little light in the center, actually, surprisingly, and not super heavy down south either, which, again, both kind of surprising. Takampoya getting some hits on that flamer there. Two support guns. Neither player with a lot of long-range stuff. A lot as in none is basically what I'm saying. Uh, I don't think either player can get outside of 1,500 meter range. I'm looking and I'm trying to remember. Uh, the answer is no. Outside of artillery, neither of these players can get more than 1,500 meters of range, which is kind of nuts. Uh, we don't see this very often that two divisions have literally nothing that even reaches 17 or 50 meter range. So really quite interesting to be sure. Infantry moving in with the cover of smoke. Nice play there. PTRS getting caught out. That I mean, if it lives, great. If it dies, not a big deal either. Perfectly placed smoke to stop that M3A1. That will not last against that Yaakati with its Panzerfaust. Down it goes. That's a shame, too, because he really actually needed that to hold these Yaakati off. The Universal Carrier, though, might be pretty useful. Pins things really fast with its double machine gun, one being a Dushka. And Dennis, cheeky grabbing this flag down here. I'm not sure how long he can keep that up. There's really not much here to stop him. First Pulse was some very strong CQC options, but definitely no match for the CQC of Rukma Rapana. Honestly, I think this division is stronger at CQC than VDV, which is literally doesn't even have infantry that shoot long range, other than a couple extremely dedicated units. IL-2 getting held back by the Vekatin. Vekatins are fantastic. They're much better than the average 20 mil because it's two 20 mils in one. And they do a nice bit of damage. Blenheim gets in. No AA cover right now. Uh... First Polish's air cover is fine. It's 37 mils. They're not amazing, but they're effective enough. Yakari pushed forward down south up against the Tankos. The Tankos actually winning. But the Molotov does get off. And the Yakari are forced back. Tankos falling back a little bit more. He's going to need reinforcements down here. The 82 mil mortar out, but not doing anything. I mean, definitely the right idea here from Dennis spamming a lot of tanks and stuff. You, you, you need them. T-34s can be great against... Rukma. Now, Rukma has ways to kill T-34s, but it's still a good weapon for that situation. Lati versus Ognim and Cheeky, or not, whatever, the Flamer. Flamer's actually losing because of the Swomis on these freaking uh, Latis, which is hilarious. The Lati unit's actually very dangerous at killing infantry because of those, because of those Swomis are so good. So, the Yaakari were pushed back. One unit was killed. I guess we missed a plane. That definitely looks like a plane hit. Nice straight line there. So that was probably a IL. No, that was heavy for an IL two. I'm not sure. Maybe it was just the 82. But the 82 full killing an infantry squad seems a, a little odd. Hopping back up north here, Yakari continue to pressure, take out the odd seal Connie there. They have no chance at CQC against those. Lati does get caught out by the BA10. BA10's fantastic. Just a fantastic unit. CC getting caught out by the T-34. That's great. He needs that. These CCs are really powerful infantry units. One of the strongest in the game, actually, I would say. One of the best units in the game. With the 1,000 meter range machine gun and a sniper rifle. Just so, so good. 
Sapper, is he getting caught out in the open? Yeah, uh, Yapasa here on the 13 11. Remember, with the mirror income here, that neither player will really have an opportunity to make a lot of advantage push. It, it's all about trades. I mean, it's always about trades, but when you have an income advantage of some sort, a lot of times you can kind of negate bad trades for a little bit, make up ground and stuff. And when all the players are equal uh, points, you don't have that opportunity. Yeah, this is what Dennis needs to do. He needs to keep Yapasa at arm's length. If he can keep out of 150 meter range, he can really dictate the, the pace of this fight because there's really nothing here to fight back. The, the Ratsuvaki here, it does have a machine gun, but it's not a very good infantry unit for it. And it's definitely going to lose against, like, the Strelsi, Strelsi LKMs and such. See, and this is my issue with Atsio I just don't think they're very good. They get pinned so quickly, they don't actually really get much of a chance to take advantage of their triple machine guns and stuff. T-34 goes down to the 45. Kind of surprising. Are those recon T-34s low armor? Is that why? Ooh, unit taken out in the transport. Yeah, Takam Poya can easily transport snipe. IL-2 does get its bombs off. Doesn't do a lot, but it does enough. Back to a 12-12. M3A1 staying out of the Akari's uh, range. Can they do it? Pinning down. And they do manage 50 cal. Should pin that down just fine. Lati, though, can easily kill that M3A1. Lati is so good. Salt Gun does find the Akari uh, out in the open. But the PTRS does go down. And now he's been fully pushed out. The other big thing with Rukma is everything is so cheap. All your infantry are 20 points, except for the Ratsuvaki, which are 25. Everything else, though, is 20 points. So just you, all your units are so freaking cheap. You can call so many in. And the, and the issue here for Dennis, he's calling in 30-point units here. Even his tankos. His tankos are 20. Okay. Yeah, I'm calling them tankos. I know that's not what they're called. They're descent something something, but they're tankos. For all intents and purposes, they are tankos. Both these units just looking at each other right now. Now, I do want to point something out, and this is something for newer players and even players who have played a while, a lot of people don't know. When units get damaged, infantry units, when they get damaged, they actually still output the exact same amount of damage. So, like, this loadout here, it will still do 1.2, 1.9 uh, uh, damage with their guns. What the disadvantage is as your units get weakened is they sh they reload slower. You notice that weakened units take a lot longer to reload, but when they fire, they do the same amount of damage they would have done at full health. So it's one of those like really weird things uh, how they balance that. But yes, your infantry actually should still do the same amount of damage at half health that they would at full health. They're just going to reload much slower doing it. Ultio Kani, find a Pack 38 out in the open. That's definitely lucky for him. These Pack 38s, definitely dangerous. One of the stronger AT weapons. Blenheim coming in. Let's check that bad boy out. Ooh, down it goes. Blenheim's one of the many tools of Rukma. Very solid, extremely efficient. On the other hand, Yak 3, not so efficient. These things kind of suck. <laughs> There's really no other way to describe it. They kind of blow. Should be able to catch this Blenheim and shoot it down, though, I would hope. But 120 mil, it's going to take quite a while. Just look how long it takes. Blenheim's only have medium health, by the way. But he does get that kill, and that's huge. You cannot let Rukma build up a big air force, or you will get absolutely smashed. Double 82 mil mortar, trying to find some of those AA pieces, I assume. Uh, Flourish Polish, of course, with a pretty big air force itself. Both these divisions kind of play a similarly, which is kind of funny. Sappers are going to dry in the transport. Yakari can absolutely wipe things with their Swomis really fast. Sappers are trying to get off their grenade. They will not. Molotov takes it down, and there goes that unit. You just can't get in the range of these dudes. They're just too strong. Too swole. I do wonder who picked first and second. I know Rukma is one of Yaapasa's strongest divisions. Um, I, I do know this is like a special of his. And also, the winner of this game will be up against me in the first round. Not looking forward to this, to be honest. Both these players quite solid. And having to play Rukma would be miserable. Like, if it's on Cell or it's on, I mean, Kostritsa as well. Although, on Kostritsa, you can try to take advantage of these open areas out here and push. That's why I wouldn't have picked first Polish, to be honest with you. I would have picked, I don't know. I mean, remember, with the Kingdom of Steel tournament, you pick a bunch of divisions and you bring them in. So, maybe Dennis had no better choices for this map. Seems unlikely, though. I mean, just anything with solid infantry but a little bit more ranged units would have been pretty solid here. 
even like Stugs or something, like not even anything crazy. IL-2 will not be able to get through those 40 mils. Currently 12-12, but Dennis down a fair number of points here. 82 mil mortar doing some nice damage here. Oh, absolutely. Very nice, very nice. Really the only way to beat Rookma at close range is mortars and such. You gotta pin their troops down and then move in. You can't, like, straight fight them. Only really powerful specialized CQC units can fight them. Uh, like Pianiti out of 4th Alpine or... Uh, maybe Sturmaviki Rocks out of 26th or, you know, the other divisions with Sturmaviki Rocks. IL-2 does get through, but doesn't really hit anything. Tankos do go down. He does have Sapazi Rocks in B phase, but they're not, I mean, they're good, but they're not like crazy good CQC units. They're just real solid ones. I'm not sure if they match up that amazingly against Yakati. I really hold Yakati in extremely high esteem. They are so deadly. 45 mil has a cheeky line of sight that shouldn't exist, but it does. It's going to take out that M3A1. BDA 20 goes down to the Lati. Man, these AT guns are so freaking good. They're so good, especially with two of them. Oh, this. Oh, oh, no. Oh, good lord. Oh, this is the dirtiest thing I've ever seen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, holy shit. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Whoa. Oh, that was like 150 points of infantry. Holy shit. That was so bad. Wow. Oh my god, if I was Dennis, I would be I would have just flipped the table. Oh my god. That was so dirty. That was so <laughs> dirty. Now, that doesn't happen much anymore because PTRSs and stuff don't kill things in one, but Lati's do. They absolutely wipe transports because of the double shot out of the Lati. Oh my god. That was Oh, wow. I can't even get over how absolutely brutal that was. That was savage. That's right. I'm using an old, like, 2000 word. Savage. Oh, my God. That was just so many troops. Completely blunted his counter push here. Wow, but back to it anyway. What a play there by Yapasa. He's also using these 50 mil mortars. These are excellent. The 800 mil range. These things can just do your opponent so dirty. Like, you, you should essentially never lose a forest fight while using these things. Like, you just shouldn't. You can pin anything and then just go in. Yak 3. The one bonus about the Yaks, they are very maneuverable. So a lot of times you can do really tight plays, get back around faster than you expect the opponent to, and they can actually get some kills. Uh, Mirzerski here. Another one. Will this Yak-3 get through the AA cover? The 40's going after the IL-2. The Yak-3 can't finish it off, but the IL-2's... One of them gets through. The bigger one with the heavier bombs does not. Dennis grabbing a 13-11 momentarily. Mirzorski takes out one of the PO-2's. Sapper rocks. You see, these guys aren't, like, insanely good CQC units. They're good because they're, they're hybrid strong at both. But they're not actually, like, insanely good at CQZ. Dennis back to 12-12, holding on to flags desperately. The thing with Rookmon, just look at all these freaking troops. With everything costing 20 points, you just get to keep calling stuff in all the time. A very unique division. And if you think you're good with it, it can be, it can be an absolute pain to play against. Like, if your opponent's very good with it. If opponent's not, it's not hard to beat. They have no long-range stuff. You just kind of sit at range, slowly block them out, uh, chunk by chunk of the map. But Yapasa is an expert with this division. 50 more come right down. You see, like, you just can't win infantry fights if this thing is on top. If your opponent's on top of that, you can't win infantry fights. It's very frustrating. IL-2, another blind bombing, exact same place. That was actually a bad choice because there's fire here, so the infantry can't be standing there anyway. Does take something out in the transport, so about time he gets a little bit of that back. 82 more is getting reloaded, needs to keep those firing. 
more AA coming in, trying to shut that down. Another 122. I haven't seen this 155 really fire. It definitely did. It's down some ammo. Not sure what it's been hitting, though, to be honest. I haven't seen anything. Although I've been pretty focused on some stuff. Salt Gun does find that taco employee. He really wants that dead. These things are just so deadly. One thing we haven't seen out of the fins yet are the T26s, too. Haven't seen any of those. IL-2. What? Where is he bombing? He's missed every single bomb strike here. Lati, uh, Panzer Shrek coming in. Otsio Kani are going to get overwhelmed here. Sapazi Rocks forced off by the BA-10. Little infantry push coming. These 82 more mortars in a little bit of dam da uh, danger. Going after the Vekatin. Plenty of those left, though, so he's not, not like he's going to run out. Here comes a span of T-70s. Interesting choice. I do love T-70s. They are actually extremely efficient. For 25 points, they can do some nice damage. All oh, these don't have the APCR that the Resvedka ones have. Down south, Otio Kani getting forced off by Sioxi Pioniri. These guys are are secretly strong. They don't look that good. There's only five men, and five men squads tend to die really fast. But double flamer with Swomis is quite a combo. BA-20 just chilling out in the open. The funny thing is, he could just drive across. The lot is the only thing that could stop him. Otherwise, he could just, like, go and attack stuff with his machine gun, which would be kind of hilarious. Chelsea LKM finally in. These guys really strong. I always think it's the wrong choice to try to go CQC versus CQC against uh, Rook Marapana. These units way too bunched up. Oh, gonna just get hit all by that bomb strike. Ouch. IL-2 coming in. Not gonna get through that A cover, I would think. It hasn't gotten through any other time. Oh, but just kidding. This has been pinned down a bit. IL-2 going for it. He changed targets. It's gonna survive because of the suppression. The other IL-2 is going for it. Bigger IL-2. Going for another blind bombing. Not gonna land. Should kill the 40 mil, I would think. There we go. Nice kill there. 122's in, though. Another 40 mil there. 122. This is the right... This is what uh, Dennis needs to do. He needs to try to play in the open. 122 now. It's got heat shells. Should be able to take out this BA-20 as long as it lands a hit. 45 mil goes down to the assault gun. Nice kill there. Dennis still extremely light in the center. Just, oh my god, there's so much combat up here north. T-70's in. I, I'm assuming he just brought them in just so they're all over the place. Trelsey goes down. Sapperzi Rocks definitely can beat a Ratsavaki. That it can win easy. Ooh, T-70 goes down to the T-26. Yeah, I, the T-70s are kind of an odd choice, though. Like, if you bring a T-34, a T-26 is going to, like, not really be able to kill it very much. T-70s, on the other hand, easy kills. Sapazi Rocks, easily overwhelmed by Sioski Pianiti. Like I said, these guys are just so freaking strong. IL-2 bombing for the T-26 completely misses. Really questioning Dennis's bombing choices. Alt Kani versus Sioski Pianiti. Normally, easy win, but with the 50 mil mortar... They get easily forced back. Like I said, so good. Thank goodness more people don't use 50 mil mortars because, my God. Thank God they're extremely micro-intensive. Because otherwise they're absolutely cracked. More T's... Okay, just a pile of recon... R is coming in. Double Vekatin in now. Gonna punish him for killing that 40 mil. Salt Gun versus 45 mil. Salt Gun technically should win, but it's pretty suppressed. And it's out in the open, so probably won't, actually. Unless this hit is big right here. Zoop. It wasn't big enough. It's gonna get one more shot off, but it should go down after that. Yep. That's a shame, too, because it could have stayed out of range. 
Thirteen eleven still for Yapasa, and we're about to hit twenty minutes, which means both players going down to a much lower income. Yakati versus Sapazi Rocks should be an easy win for the Yakati. Again, these guys are just not strong enough. They're they're just not. If Dennis picked first, uh, picked second, I think this was the wrong choice of division. If he picked second, I mean, if he picked first, there's not much you can do about it. This probably was, this would normally be a solid division for this map. But Rukma is a is a solid counter to it because you don't get punished for Rukma's weaknesses, which is not having 1,500 meter plus stuff. And since you yourself, as first Piatori, don't either, then you don't really punish him. I have one five threes coming in. These can kill a tank in one pass with double like he has right here. But the 37 mil should be able to hold this off quite easily. These are very bad resilience planes. That is the, the trick with them. They're very cheap and they're very good at what they do. But they are super easy to kill. Down goes one. The Act 3 will die for this. Double Vecatin should be able to kill that quite easily. 122 hitting that AA. And down the Act 3 goes, down the 37 mil goes. These 122s are actually better at direct line of fire support. Uh, 80 points, I mean, they're basically the only 2k you get in the division. Uh, so if you use them directly as support like he's doing here, they're actually really quite effective. It's a 2k HE gun. When they have line of sight, they're pretty accurate. Alright, so carriers and such in. Lotties, though, are kind of a brick wall for this. Here comes the Lotsi trying to get in. Strelsi need to stop it, but do not. And down they go. Just absolutely wipes those units out. Here comes the IL-2 horde. Lots of they actually picking real targets this time. It, it does appear. Nope, still blind firing into that forest. Vekatin's kind of out of position here, actually. IL-2s will get through. Everyone actually kills off a little weakened Kavari. Oh, nice bombing strike there. Kills off the Akari. So IL-2s finally get in successfully. Final one coming in. Little late to the party. Back to a 12-12. Both players in their C phase income. Here comes double Muzorski. These are actually really solid for 85 points. Really solid plane. Medium resilience, 200 kilogram bombs. That's always a nice loadout for a fighter bomber. They're actually going for fighter duty here. There's really no AA. Katusha strike in. I think this is too far away. It looks like he's just going for the pin or the 20 mil. Gets both. Gets the 38 and the 20 mil. Can't complain too hard about it. And kills the CC. That's one of the most successful Katusha strikes I've seen. Yak1B going to go down to the Vekatins because they're not very good. And getting the job done here, but still not very good. This IL-2 needed to, like, needs to get out. It's going to die to the Nazorskis. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm sorry. I'm doing my best. IL-2 does get around in time, gets a burst off, does some nice damage. These Mazorskis only have machine guns, so they're not putting out that much. Well, actually, they are putting out some pretty good damage there with their machine guns. Something died. T-34 died to the 122 mil or the pack 75 mil. IL-2 getting hit. Yak-1B in to save. No, just kidding. That was the IL-2 die. And the Yak-1B dies. Oh! They're not good, guys. I mean, you don't have much of a choice in first Polish, but God, I don't like them. I do not like Yaks. They're too weak. Their, their weapon loadout doesn't do enough damage. Saperzi rocks and Yarkari passing like two ships in the night. We're seeing that artillery going. Still not 100% sure what this 155 has hit. I haven't seen... Oh, he was going after the 82 mil mortars. They're still alive, though. 155 totally failing. Which is surprising, because I think they're in range of this radio. It certainly looks like they are. They are. They're in range of that radio. And there's, like, nothing down south for Dennis. He's looking very thin on the map. Artillery gets a lucky hit. Kill the infantry and damaging both T-70s. 82 mil mortars doing some counter battery. Not something you see very often. 
It's really deep, though. They're not going to be accurate. Yeah, it's a lucky hit anyway. Nice. DO17 doing some recon, revealing the weakness of Dennis's line. Katusha should move up. They could be like all the way like up in this position. Then they'd really act. They actually get pretty accurate at that point. Otsilkani too deep in the forest. This is not where they want to be. Lai Tununta gets off its uh, grenade. Not even necessary with the Sioski Pianetti there as well. It's not even anything here to hold this part of the line. The line will collapse, and I think this flag should flip. It's going to come up just short. I mean, if he moves up at all, he'll get that flag. And he is making a push. The thing is, too, Rukma can continue to play very efficiently into C phase with Maverick Income because of all their units only being 20 points. So you can still call in four infantry squads a tick at 20 points, which is quite a fair bit. And if you're using... Oh, there goes an 82 to the 155. And if you're using them efficiently, it... They fight 30 and 35 point units just fine. Let's check out this 155. Look at that big Bertha. Whoa. I-153 lo uh, lost its, its target there on the uh, T-70. Back to a 12-12. Dennis holding out, but... I mean, he's... He, I don't see where he gets a flag. That's the issue here. Ratsavaki gets a grenade on target, kills off that T-70. I-153 cannot finish off the T-70. Oh, transport kill with the 75 mil. Oh, no. Machine gun Maxim does get out. There's nothing here to stop this. Like, it's weird to say, but Rukma has the range advantage here. <laughs> I, I don't know what Dennis can bring in to kill this little patch of units. And Dennis throws in the towel. I have to agree. I don't know how he comes back in that game. Coast 3, so 26 minutes, 39 seconds, 1,585 to 2,445 kills. Yeah, I mean, with a 900 kill difference, I don't think you can really close that gap. Uh, it's it's just too, it's you're too far behind. Salt Gun T-34s did okay, but that's about it. On the other side, Yakardi Lati is doing tons of damage. The Mizorski doing lots of damage as well. 122 getting a ton of kills. Ouch. But yeah, what a game. If you guys enjoyed that, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and continue check out the Patreon down below if you really love the channel. Thanks a bunch and have a fantastic day.